So I'm picking one of the glamorous ones this week. Probably the best, if not one of the best Messier objects. So this week it's all about M87, this guy. So this is a super giant elliptical galaxy. Super giant, which always makes me think of the Rick James song, you know, it's like super giant, super giant. Oh, <laughs> super yeah. freak. Oh, <laughs> always I... makes me think of super giant. Okay. okay. So anyway, you can cut that out, but that's what it makes me <laughs> In your dreams. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, this is one of the most massive galaxies known in the universe. It's like the heaviest galaxy we know of. The Milky Way's mass is about 580 billion solar masses. So about 580 billion times the mass of the sun is contained in the Milky Way. But in M87, it's more like 2,400 billion times the mass of the sun. So this thing is big. It also has the largest supermassive black hole at its center as well. This is the galaxy here. And this huge, big blue jet thing is being produced by the supermassive black hole in the center. It's energy that's being radiated out from the accretion disk around the black hole. It's going at the speed of light, but actually due to the geometry of the system that you look at it, it actually looks like it's moving faster than the speed of light. And it's something we call superluminal motions. The jet's made of gas and particles. Radiation is obviously what you see. So you get a lot of electrons in there. You get stuff called like synchrotron radiation. It's giving out a lot in the radio as well. So this is a really famous radio galaxy. Oh. Look how beautiful that is. I mean, it's, it's false color, but it's really showing you where the high energy stuff is. So the galaxy now is this sort of tiny spot in the center and it shows you, you know, really how extensive those radio jets actually are from the black hole itself. These black holes tend to give off two jets. So they give it off symmetrically um, either side of, of the black hole. You, know, you can imagine it one way and the other way. Um, but the direction that we're seeing at, we don't see this main jet on the other side. We just see the sort of the end where it's sort of like ballooned outwards. And so it's a, sort of a double lobe is what we call them. One of the very first lectures I had as a PhD student, um, so, you know, fresh-faced PhD student, that excited, we had a lecture on these radio galaxies. The professor told me, and I remember really clearly, that he said, if the M87 galaxy was the size of a grain of sand, then the jets from the black hole would extend your entire palm, which I thought was fantastic, because it really reminded me very, very clearly of a famous poem by William Blake. I don't know if you know it, but it says, to see your world in a grain of sand and heaven in a wild flower, to hold infinity in the palm of your hand and eternity in an hour. And I mean, that poem's beautiful by itself, but literally I hear it and it gives me goosebumps just thinking about M87 and the fact that, you know, to see your world in a grain of sand, to see an entire galaxy in, in a grain of sand, like, I think it's just so poetic and beautiful. <laughs> So the Milky Way has like two, 300 maybe globular clusters. M87 has more like 12,000. So a huge number of globular clusters. You get an idea of the scale of you know, how much bigger this galaxy actually is. It's also in a cluster of galaxies as well. So if you remember, we've talked about this before, this is the Virgo cluster of galaxies. And the reason that M87 is very special is because it's actually the very center of this cluster of galaxies. There's probably about 1,300 galaxies in it. So it's a huge structure. It might not look like it's in the middle from this image, but trust me, it is the gravitational center of this huge structure that's not even covered by this just one image. But you'll see there's a lot of other Messier objects in the cluster as well. It was a very productive night for Messier when he was labeling all of these. So Becky, do all the other galaxies in this cluster mm -hmm. orbit around M87? Yes, basically. Their movements and their speeds will all be affected by M87. So that will be the sort of gravitational center, not necessarily going around, you know, in an orbit, around it necessarily. It might be more like hyperbolic and stuff, but there will be movement in the cluster and it will be driven by M87 itself. So the cool thing about M87 is that yes, it's the center of the Virgo cluster, but the Virgo cluster is also the center of something called the Virgo supercluster, which is a cluster of clusters. <laughs> and one of the groups of galaxies that's in this Virgo supercluster is the local group. And the local group consists of Andromeda and the Milky Way. So you can think of it as, you know, the Earth goes around the sun, the sun goes around the Milky Way, the Milky Way goes around the center of the local group, and the local group goes around the center of the Virgo supercluster. The center of the Virgo supercluster is the center of the Virgo cluster, which is M87. So basically, our entire galaxy is also influenced by M87. Basically, you know, the Earth is technically going round M87. Where's the smoking gun picture of it? I've never, seen this, I've never seen a beautiful picture of it, like Andromeda or something. Well, that's because it's it's not got anywhere near as beautiful of structure as Andromeda. You know, Andromeda is this gorgeous spiral galaxy like our own, but M87 is just a blob. 
It's just a giant light blob of 2,400 billion solar masses. It's huge. So it's not really that interesting to look at in terms of you know your eye and what your eye picks out in, in the shape. But in terms of um, you know what kinematics, i.e., the, the speed that the stars are moving at, um, and and the speed and the speed around the black hole that stars moving, all that kind of information that you can glean from astronomical studies with spectra and photometry are really really interesting. So we have to think about M87. You can ask the question: Is it at the centre of the cluster because it's an elliptical galaxy and the most massive galaxy? Or is it the most massive galaxy because it's at the center? To understand that, we have to go back to the beginning and this idea that all galaxies form from these tiny fluctuations. All right, so if you think about straight after the Big Bang, you just have this soup of particles and you have all these particles sort of clumping together and there's less dense parts and there's more dense parts. And then you had something that called inflation and inflation sort of locked in all of those density fluctuations and expanded the universe at a ridiculous rate, you know, rates that we haven't seen since then and expanded it outwards so that these density fluctuations then became the sites for the first stars and galaxies being formed. So you can imagine once you have this density fluctuation, you have all this dark matter and, and mass and, and normal matter coming in and you can end up forming a galaxy in this rotating disk, beautiful spiral shape like we're familiar with, with like Milky Way or Andromeda in these uh, more dense regions. Of course, then you probably have formed some other galaxies at other density fluctuations, but of course that one's probably more dense. So then those start to drift in towards that more dense area and you get mergers and you start to lose that spiral shape and all that gravitational dance and you end up with these ellipticals and you start forming these groups of galaxies that are all formed together. We call this hierarchical structure formation. So it happens very hierarchically where you can form a galaxy and then you merge galaxies and then galaxies come together and you form groups of galaxies. Of course, then once you've got a group of galaxies, you then merge those together as well. And when a group of galaxy merges, the, the heaviest things will sink to the center. And again, they'll merge probably forming more blobbish structures rather than beautiful spiral structures. And then that's the heaviest thing in the center of that, what's become the cluster of galaxies. So we have a little bit of both. At the beginning, the scenario was that because it was the heaviest thing, it became the center and so it was fated to be an elliptical because it was gonna have mergers that ruined its spiral structure. But then by the time you started merging groups and clusters of galaxies together, it was fated to be the center because it was an elliptical, because it was the heaviest thing in the actual group of galaxies that before the merger. Like it reinforced its position. Exactly, yeah. It was like, now I'm, because I am the biggest thing, I'm still going to continue to be the biggest thing. And so you have a little bit of both happening. And that wasn't always well understood for a long time. And it was only by studying the, the sort of the kinematics, how the stars move in these galaxies, that we really figured that out. So like by luck it was chosen to be a leader, but then it started showing leadership qualities. Exactly, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Where does this rank on the list of places in the universe you'd go if you could go on a fantasy tour trip? Fantasy tour trip of the universe. Well, I'd definitely go to the Eagle Nebula because it's my favorite. I'd probably go visit Andromeda. I'd probably go see the Whirlpool Galaxy, M87, obviously, because it's the center of you know our local universe, if you will. Maybe go see the Horsehead Nebula. That's pretty cool. So if you think about M87, the most massive galaxy we now know must have actually formed from one of the most, like, biggest of the density fluctuations. These tiny density fluctuations that were imprinted in by inflation, one of the most massive ones must have been where M87 is now. I think M87 most embodies the phrase, started from the bottom, now we're here, because <laughs> it started from something so tiny and it's now become the most massive. So, both William Blake and Drake in this video. <laughs> Who's Drake? You don't know Drake. <laughs> oh, this is Drake, the rap artist. Okay. Started from the bottom, now we're here. It's okay. a famous lyric of his. I've turned into my dad. Turned into your dad. You're like, like a young Do I keep you young? <laughs> no. You make me feel older. Well, our quest to make videos about all 110 Messier objects also started at the bottom, and, well, now we're here. If you'd like to watch some of the other videos, check out the links on the screen and in the video description. You can also support us on Patreon, which is something we really appreciate if you're so inclined. So check out those links as well. It's like super giant, super giant. Super freak.